Stability AI releases Deep Floyd IF, a powerful text-to-image model that can smartly integrate text into images. Yes, if you've used Stable Diffusion before and tried to generate some text with that, you will have seen that it doesn't do very well. This, on the other hand, can actually produce readable text, make Floyd Deep Again and Robot Ramen. It can also do a bit of image to image and some in painting as well. But the main thing is that it can do text. There you can see it's perfectly readable text and the image quality is also quite nice as well. If we scroll down a bit more, we can see the basic process. It starts off really teeny tiny, 64 by 64, then upscales to 256 and finally to 1024. If we scroll down a bit more, we've got some information on the data set training and also the license. Now the model is under a research license and they've got lots of information there about the sorts of things that you should be looking into. So they've got some technical research questions, some academic research questions, and also some ethical research questions too. If you pop over to the GitHub page, they've got linked there. You can see two separate licenses. So the code is under one license and the model is under another. If we scroll down even more, we've got some more example images there. That one we've already seen. And now we are on to the minimum requirements. If you want to download the models, you're looking at about 35 gig or more of disk space. I've downloaded both the 16 and 8-bit mode models. It doesn't mention the 8-bit mode models on there. So those minimum requirements are slightly out. So they've got 16 gig if you want to go up to 256 by 256 or 24 gig for the 1024, but it is actually lower, like I say, if you run it in 8-bit mode. You could probably get away with about a 12 gig VRAM card if you're really lucky. 16 will certainly run in 8-bit mode. As this was only recently released, if you're looking for any fancy interfaces, they don't exist. However, you do have a couple of ways to run this if you don't want to install anything locally. One option there is the Google Colab, and there's another option there. Probably the easiest one is the Hugging Face Space. This gives you a Gradio interface where you can just type in your prompt, your negative prompt, click Generate, and you'll get some pictures. You can upscale it as well, and there are some advanced options. I, of course, am installing it locally because that's the sort of thing that I like to do. And I'm going to be using the integration with diffusers because the diffusers library makes things very easy to use. As you can see in that example, you're going to have to have a Hugging Face account and be logged into that. You'll need to accept the license agreement on that model card. So go over there and you'll see a license agreement and you'll have to click OK on that, accept that license agreement, and then you will need to log in. As usual, you'll have the very best experience using an NVIDIA GPU and Linux, but this should also work on Microsoft Windows as well. I'm going to be using Anaconda to create virtual Python environments. So with that installed, let's crack open the Anaconda prompt and get installing. Now I'm going to be ignoring the instructions from the top here and just installing the diffusers version. The first thing to do is create your environment. There it is. I have already created mine, so I'm just going to say no there, and I can dive straight into activating it. There we go. I've activated my Deep Floyd environment. I'm then going to install all the things that I need to use the diffusers version. As you can see there, I'm installing Hugging Face Hub, diffusers, transformers, safe tensors, sentence piece, accelerate bits and bytes, and PyTorch version 2. As mentioned, you'll then need to log into Hugging Face Hub. So let's start Python there and we'll run that login. It's asking me for my token so I can go over to Hugging Face and I can click on there, copy my token, paste that in there, press return. It will say yes, add token. Yes, please. And that will save your token. You can press Control D and exit. OK, so that's covered all those bits there. We can now just copy and paste this into a new text file. As I've got PyTorch version 2 installed, I'm going to remove these lines as well. So those three where it says remove, I have removed. Let's open my text thing. There we go. Copied and pasted. Miraculous speed and all those lines removed. Now, if you just give this a little run, let's pop this over here. Python example 1.py. 
And here, while that's running, we can have a quick look at what it's doing. So as you can see, what this is doing, I've moved the prompt up the top to make it a bit easier, is creating an anthropomorphic rodent holding up a sign which reads, good morning, and it should be high resolution and all that sort of stuff. There, it will download the models for you. We've got the variant FP16, then it upscales it. And we've got stage one, stage two, and stage three. So the 64, the 256, and the final 1024 image. Once those three stages have finished, you can have a look at the output. So there we go. There is stage one. As you can see, it's very, very teeny tiny. That's 64 by 64. Then it upscales it and it upscales it again. And there it is. Good morning. It's actually readable text. Very nice indeed. If we scroll down to the end of this section, we can see we've got a few more bits and bobs here. Optimizing for inference time, optimizing for low memory during inference, there's also a blog post and the documentation which I'm going to be going through as the rest of these aren't diffusers examples. It does show you what you can do. So there you've got the dream, which is text to image, the image to image translation, and also a little bit of super resolution, which of course we've seen and in painting as well. Right, so let's have a look at optimizing for memory. Here it is on that Hugging Face Diffusers documentation page. What you can do here is instead load it in 8-bit mode with an 8-bit variant as well. So that's a different download. And if we copy and paste all of this magically, there it is. I've copied and pasted it into example two. Once again, I've moved the prompt up the top. And this time I'm looking at a fantasy art style digital image of a cyberpunk rodent holding up a sign which reads, nerds rule. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. It's basically gonna do exactly the same thing, but it uses a lot less VRAM. All right, so if we have a look at the output from that, there we go, we've got the 8-bit, and there it is, nerds rule, excellent. While the image itself isn't fantastic, the text is. Thus, if you want to run in 8-bit mode, that seems perfectly viable. Okay, so let's carry on through this Hugging Face Diffusers documentation. We've done that, we've done the text to image generation. We've shown that in FP16 and also in 8-bit mode as well. The next thing we've got here is the text guided image to image generation and another thing to copy and paste in there. There we go, copied and pasted that in there. Once again, I've moved the prompt up the top to make it a little bit easier to see. So this time we've got a fantasy landscape in style Minecraft. And here it's downloading an image, and that is the image it's going to be downloading. You might recognize that from another repository. So let's see what happens if we run that. Comparing them side by side, we've got the original at the top there and the Minecraft version at the bottom. I think that's done quite nicely. Continuing down in the documentation, the next thing we have here is text guided in paint generation. So once again, you can click the old copy and paste, and there it is text guided in painting. So this time we've got prompt blue sunglasses. Okay, what's, what's this doing? Well, it's taking a picture person and putting a mask on it and making those glasses blue. So there's the mask, it's, it's teeny tiny. There's the person you may recognize. And so we're putting that mask and so we should have some blue glasses come out. Let's see how well that has done. There's the teeny tiny one, 64 by 64. Let's go up scale there, 256 and final resolution there. As you can see, ever so slightly wonky there, could be the mask, could be the code, who really knows? But the main thing about this is the text generation. There it is, fairly quick and easy to use, already integrated into Diffuser, so that makes it super easy, and lots of technical, academic, and ethical research questions to dive into. Of course, if you want to look at other nerdy rodent videos, I'd suggest this one.